Hello everybody, my name is Algum, and welcome back to Spirit Hunter Deathmark. Previously, a lot of stuff happened. We met some unfortunate souls of the forest and managed to escape their grasp. Met a man who was intent on dying that night and managed to convince him that perhaps delaying the inevitable for just a little bit was a wise decision. We also explored more of the forest where we found many, many bees and learned a bit more about Shimio. And speaking of which, we found another unfortunate victim of his mark. Ended up escaping through the forest where we ended up encountering Shimio himself. Who ended up taking the man that we had just recently convinced not to die. Christy Armour. Well, you showed up in the middle of the case, so I'm assuming that we should take you. Hey, don't you sass me. Anyway, let's return back to the forest. And by the way, just a little gripe I have with this game, with this particular one, it's just the fact that it says exit, which is very misleading, to be honest. We come to the forest's entrance once again. That man is gone, it seems. I look at the old picnic table. What was Shimio doing back then? Making a corpse sit next to him. It's almost like he was having a picnic. Did he just want a friend? Hmm? What do you mean? Nothing, sorry. Just talking to myself. Don't worry about it. Let's go. We haven't learned anything about him yet. Okay, well it appears that I lied in my intro. <laughs> I try changing the subject, but I still can't stop staring at the picnic table. Well, is there anything there? A wooden trash container. Feel around inside the container, my fingers hit something hard. Got an empty bottle. There's something else too. I pick it up. It's a crumpled piece of paper, a talisman? With the family fun, play catch. Liquid got on sticky. Bees gather over and over. Game interrupted. That's all it says. Is this a diary draft or something? Got honeybee family draft. Eh, well, I'm assuming there isn't anything else, so... God, I need to... Get used to the controls again. <laughs> it's been so long. We didn't really get a good look at the um, building that she was in. Okay, well... Th this place is full of beehives. Using the spray could calm them, but... There's a high above the gate, too. There's no way I can spray up there. Oh, then I suppose it's impossible. True enough, but... That time the rabbit brought me here, it didn't try to go inside the gate. So maybe there's no reason to force a way inside. Yes, yes, I get it. There's a swarm of bees. I don't like how it turns me around. I believe this was the cabin where we found Christy, so... Okay. Any feedback, family notes? Open the notebook, but most of the pages have been ripped out. Doubt it has anything useful. Alright, what's in the box? I open it. There are carefully preserved, torn notebook pages inside. It is a holy journey, performed in a quiet place. In the area past the meeting place, there is a clue about how to get to paradise. The eastern thicket, often. Honeybee Family Notes 3. Alright, what have we got here? 
I search through all the containers and gather the ones that still have something in them. Ah, some more night night spray. Good. I was just looking for more of that. It looks like maybe a mouse chewed a hole in this plastic container. It's unusable. Do mice just randomly chew stuff through <laughs> containers like that for no apparent reason? I can't imagine there was anything edible in them. Anyway, what's down here? The buzzing of bees fills the area. Looks like there's another giant beehive here. It probably wouldn't be wise to keep going without doing something about them first. I take out the spare and hold it in one hand. I should be able to use it to spray chemicals. Eventually the hive falls completely silent, and yep. Pesticides are bad for you. Be careful not to breathe any in. You'll get asthma. Well, we don't really have much of a choice now. Alright. I hear creaks and groans along with the rustling of leaves. If I look at that, there's going to be a ghost. And there's nothing else here. Yeah, let's go left first. There's more bees! <laughs> uh, let's not go down that path that yet then. Again? Okay, well... Yeah, what have we got here? Yeah, I can do that too. There's a thick growing straight there's a thicket growing straight ahead. It's rather dense, there's no way to see what's past it. Have we got something in there? The best through the thick undergrowth. And that is a small clearing inside. The path might keep going. I relay something as I continue down it. I can feel someone staring at me from the bushes. I try to slip through the front. Hate. Men. But a strong force pushes me back. Okay, well... Hey, Christy. I need you here. What? M me? I guess I'll have to. She faces the figure and offers up a prayer. The figure vanishes. It, it disappeared? It seems her desperate prayer worked. For thank goodness, it didn't possess me. Good job. Let's keep going. Alright, this thing better- oh. Uh, okay, well, that looks like something very, very important, so I'm not going to mess with that quite yet. What have I got here? A sweet fragrance wafts on the wind from somewhere in the darkness. And my feet are what look like beehives. This must be all that remains of a bee farm. It's weird that something like this is here of all places. Well, might as well have a look around. Uh, you're not going to comment on... Dangling from the tree are human corpses. The skin is as white as wax. Countless holes are drilled into the bodies and bees are buzzing in and out of them. My mind flashes back to the corpse in the cottage. It's just like that woman. Christy is looking away. <laughs> How horrible. Why would anyone do this? The beehive at my feet starts to rattle. A pitch black cloud suddenly rises up, overwhelming my vision. Okay, I was not prepared for there to be a swarm of bees. Something invades my eyes and nose. It's... 
a swarm of bees. Eek. No, stay away from me. Live or hive. Even more bees are coming from the hives. Which hive should I close first? Well, I remember something about it saying that the bees come from... What is it? The Where the sun rises, right? I don't know which way is north, so I'm going to assume that it's either left or right. And considering that we are in Japan, that would mean that we have to go to the left. Us being in Japan has nothing to do with that, but... I'm assuming the western hive is what we have to close first. I rushed to the hive and someone managed to close the lid. But... Bees descend on me from all sides. They must have swarmed out from another beehive. I am going to die. <laughs> Check for more active hives. Well, it makes sense that the... Oh, maybe the southern hive was what I was supposed to close first. I dive at the hive and close the lid. It's a close call, but I managed to seal up the awakened bees. But bees start descending on me from another hive. What? Okay, well, that's a bit unfair. I can't check for more active hives. I'm dead. My entire body is pricked by stingers. My vision darkens immediately. Buzzing wings serve as a lullaby as I drift off to an eternal sleep. Game over. Okay, well... Uh, let's check the... Let's check the documents again. Nope, that's not it. Leave in the direction of the sun. So is it... Maybe it's the south? But then I'd have bees on both sides then, so that wouldn't make sense. Okay, so... It might be the eastern one that I want to close first, then. Will that be the correct answer? I rush to the hive and someone managed to close the lid. I hear the disgusting sound of bees being crushed. Seems I was able to stop their attack. Okay, I get it now. The bees come from, or they want to go towards the sun. Which means that the other active hives, they're going to be going towards the west, right? Yeah. If I'm correct... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I just did it in the wrong order. A lukewarm liquid spurts everywhere, like a grape bursting in my hand. I succeeded in closing the hive right before the bees burst out of it. I mean, that's not going to do anything about the bees currently out. After I close all the hives, the bees finally quiet down. Survived the hive. <sighs> that was close. Yeah, you're telling me. Feels like I died once. We crouch there for a while until we catch our breaths. I mean, there better have been something good here. I open the beehive, but the bees are cr just crawling around inside it silently. Alright, I see how it is. I open the beehive. There's a bottle of 
chemicals among the swarm. Large bottle of sweet dreams. The label has a warning on it. Do not mix. Dangerous. Mixing sweet dreams and night night is extremely dangerous for family. Cannot be used with the spare. Alright, that doesn't exactly tell me much, but... It's several human corpses, as white as wax. The inside of the holes seem to have a spiral pattern. Must have been made intentionally. A thick liquid drips from them. The smell! Well, I can't describe how horrible it is. The bees are gathering on it. What is that liquid? It seems that liquid attracts bees. If I had a suitable container, I could gather some of it. The corpse is clutching something in its hand. I pry open the stiff fingers. Cottage key. When I put the key in my bag, my wrist burns in pain. The mark burns scarlet. Half an hour left until death closes in. I've felt this before. Cold sweat drips down my back. I suddenly remember what happened at H Elementary. The mark's symptoms accelerated, and the person with me began acting strangely. Hey, Christy? I spin around and look at them. What? She stares at me, puzzled. Are you... feeling okay? Yes, I feel perfectly normal. We need to hurry, you know. R right It doesn't seem like she's changed at all. I don't understand what's going on, but if she's fine, that's great news. Human bee farm. Well, that tells me that perhaps Shimio is not her mark. Also, I do have a tool for this. I have a bottle. I take out the empty bottle and gather some of the dripping liquid in it. Got stinky liquid. Well, I guess we should head back. What? Okay, I thought there was something there. The buzzing of bees fills the area. Looks like there's another giant beehive here. It probably wouldn't be wise to keep going without doing something about them first. There weren't this many bees before. I should actually probably just head back and go to the shack, I guess? I really don't like that rope sound. It's unnecessary. Someone there. The Jesus statue is damaged from being exposed to the elements for so long. Use the cottage key to open the door. An overly sweet smell permeates the inside of the cottage. I'm pretty sure it's... Honey, huh? My eyes fall on the white object that was carelessly left lying around. That can't be. Don't tell me. You're thinking about opening that? I have to check it out. No, you don't. You already have one example of what's in the bag. You don't... This isn't a mystery bag of, oh, it could be anything. You already know what's going to be in there. A corpse that's been drilled and this probably has a bunch of bees all over it. We don't have much time left. Uh, please be more... Aw oh, man, no more night night. Several bug eaten novels, they're unreadable. Nothing's inside the small box, but the outside is covered in something that's horribly sticky. An old notebook. Family won't die if they're dreaming. If the betrayer comes, wake them up and hit them. Do it until they calm down. Be careful, everyone. When they wake up, 
family is only human. That looks like some useful information. Yes, yes. You don't have to ask me to take it. What about there? Is there anything there? Open up the container. Inside is something that looks like a dried tree root. There's a scrap of paper stuck to the tree root with wire. Everyone's gone. I'm all alone now. I want to see everyone. But my head is so foggy. I can't remember how. I think the last thing I need to do is combine those two, but... Okay, so that's probably the hint on how we can save or destroy Shimio. Inside is corroded. Okay, so it's useless. Blacken on the inside. Probably be dangerous to turn it on. A big burlap sack is slung against the wall. It is incredibly lumpy, making it easy to determine it is holding something. Just then, something inside the bag moves. It keeps squirming intermittently. Why? Why is it moving? A cold sweat breaks out on my forehead. I intently reach for the mouth of the bag. Holding my breath, I slowly open it. A sickeningly sweet smell hits us. No, it's our friend! I believe his name is Masao Kamara? It's a corpse currently becoming a beehive. It's completely unrecognizable at this point, but I intuitively know who it is. Masao Kamara, who was sitting on the bench with Shimio and wanted to commit suicide. But that can't be a beehive? Honeybees are burrowing into the holes all over his body, making their hive. The faint noise we heard coming from the bag must have been the buzzing of bees. This is... beyond insane. It has to be the work of Shimio. Once it's complete, another object, de art, will be added to that repulsive bee farm. Just then I noticed some objects stuffed in next to the corpse. The mismatched items seemed almost like accessories for the dearly departed. A tennis ball, large bottle of night night, night night times three. Days the swarm, then you'll be safe. Days the swarm? Can I do that with what I've found so far? We must re return Masao's corpse to the bag. I'd like to give him a proper burial, but. There's no time for that right now. Hey, can I say something? Christie's expression is grave. Her face is flushed with shame. I know full well that it's far too late to be saying this, but... I can't stand it. I can't take any more of this. If we run into this monster, no way will I be able to do anything. I'm not kidding. Whatever I said on TV, it's totally meaningless here in the forest. Sorry, but I can't help you anymore. I know this is out of the blue, but I thought it was now or never. I really am sorry, but I just can't do this. Christy stumbles over multiple apologies. No, there's nothing to apologize for. It's normal in situations like this. Any regular person would react the same. Hell, everyone would want to run as far away as they could. But her confession carries a dangerous consequence of its own. If at some point I end up fighting the spirit like I did at H Elementary, could she handle being my partner? Well, that's a big resounding no, my friend. Opened the door and left the cabin. Kamara, you better not be haunting me from beyond the grave. I did save you. Alright. Is there... No, okay. 
Well, I suppose it's time to turn back then, before I continue exploring the forest. You know, just out of curiosity, I'm wondering what happens if we bring Christy into the fight. So, I just returned here just to save. I know that... I know that we're going to die, but... You know, for you all at home, it's going to be very quick... Transition. Whew, they're taken care of. Let us move forward. Alright, and I'm assuming that what's up ahead is going to be... It's a trio of women's corpses that have been turned into hives. The buzz of bees fills the air. If I don't do something about the bees, we won't be able to get through here. Uh, perhaps the... Night Night. I take up the Night Night and put it in the sprayer. I take off flame and spray the chemical. Yes, yes, the hive falls silent and voila. What have we got here? An indescribably horrible smell is coming from the thick liquid dripping from the holes. Nothing else really stands out. Um... I don't know, should I use this? Was there no purpose to getting the liquid from before? What did I even get from the other place? Ah, uh, yeah, that's right, I got the cottage key. Okay, so it was necessary. Okay. Just wanted to know I wasn't wasting my time. What have we got in the gift box? There's a bottle of drugs hidden inside the beehive. Good morning. The mark has dyed a deep crimson. A few minutes left until death closes in. The mark scorches me again. Looks like we're out of time. I brace myself, then glance over at Christy. What? Christy, I'm counting on you. I think he's almost here. Seriously? I'm positive this is the exact same feeling as before. Don't freak out when he comes. Just do as I say, and it'll be okay. I've survived this one already. R right I'm counting on you, Mr. Yashiki. An achievement. I proceed to lead Christy into the darkness. Drifting on the wind from somewhere is the meltingly sweet fragrance of honey. No, there's bees! I'd like to think that Shimio just tossed that hive at us. Something flies at us in the dark. A sharp pain pierces the arm I used to cover my face. I think I got stung by a bee. Oh, carrot. He's getting really close. Bees swarm around Shimio as he draws closer. I won't survive being attacked again. Uh, okay, what am I supposed to use? Well, it's probably this, right? I pour stinky liquid over the tennis ball and throw it. Shimio incites the bees. The bee cloud rushes at the ball. They must be reacting to the smell of the liquid on it. The bees swarm the ball, and they look like a dense black cloud. Alright, let's do that again then. Shimio incites the bees. The bee cloud rushes at the ball again. I guess the second ball was effective too. You are all sorts of ugly. Uh, I guess that... And a broken crowbar, why not? 
I spray Shimio with the drug and hit them with the crowbar. Shimio is wounded. The cut opens on his giant body and the bittersweet smelling liquid pours out. Oh, I, I'm not a traitor. We injured him, but only barely. Guess the broken crowbar isn't a good weapon. But he faltered. He did falter, though. Let's do that one more time. I spray Shimio with the drug, and once again... Back, you foul beast! Um... Well... Eh, this is quite the pickle we've got ourselves in, um... Take a bite of this, then. Well, eh, uh, that sucks. He pauses for a moment bewildered, but starts up his attack again immediately. Christy was injured. Yeah, okay, we died. My vision darkens. I can see the spirit slowly drawing closer. Okay, well... Okay, so it, it was very blunt with the fact that Christy is not the person to bring to the fight, but it is a little bit deceiving. I was kind of expecting him to just run into the forest and leave us to die, but no, actually, it, we actually got pretty far. The only problem is that we... the crowbar is not a good weapon. So we either bring Sho so that he can use the bat, or we bring Mashta so that we can use the gun. Mashta, I'm counting on you. Sorry, this is going to hurt. I slapped Mashta's face. That didn't sound like a slap. That sounded more like winding up and giving him a full knuckle sandwich. <clears throat> that did the trick. Nice hit. That clear your head a little? He's coming. We have to go. We'll do everything we can, but you have to do as I say. Right, you can count on me. I proceed to lead Mashta into the darkness. Drifting on the wind from somewhere is the meltingly sweet fragrance of honey. I'm back, you subnormal half-wit. Anyway, it's time for us to initiate the plan. Ashta, you better not... You better not fail me now. Get away, you bees. Take your precious honey and screw off. Yeah, I don't like that how there's honey coming from, like, different orifices on his body. Stinky liquid, and then the tennis ball. Thrown against the wall. Ah, I did not miss that face in the least. Yeah, it's that. Have some good morning. And back off! My cut opens on his giant body and a bittersweet smelling liquid pours out. Oh, I, I'm not a traitor. 
Shimeo bends over backward, moaning. Liquid sprays from the holes in his body. And now one more shot. Partially for good measure and partially just because you're you're too close, right? Shimio writhes in pain, his body jiggling. No, I don't wanna wake up. Shimio hollers in pain as the bullets hit, but it doesn't seem to be enough to beat him. Shimio is clearly weak. Now's the time to finish him off. I... I'm going to go with Sweet Dreams and the Dried Root. Shimio blinks bewildered, but that's all. Doesn't seem particularly effective. Have some root. Sully munches on the dried root with a loud gulp, swallows it. This isn't enough. Uh-oh. Weakened by the attack, Shimio shakes but musters the last of his strength. Bees swim out of the holes in Shimio's body and sting his entire body. Okay, well, uh, clearly I did something wrong. Okay, well, I didn't examine the... What is it? The bench last time. And he left a bottle of honey, Shimio. No, it's probably more like he just forgot it. Just then, I see something lying on the table itself. It's the cap from a soft drink. The inside of it is still wet. But I don't see the bottle itself anywhere. Is that what I forgot? Is that what I needed? Found on the top of a picnic table, it's filled with fresh honey. Um, hmm. I don't think this is going to be what I combine, but... Maybe it is? Who knows? This is the end of the Path of Meetings. This might be the area past the meeting place mentioned in the note. We push through the undergrowth. And find a bistro leading to the east. There's like a whole other area I missed? Then... The ghost of a man stands blocking our way, silently staring. The figure is glaring harshly. The figure is glaring harshly at both of us. Hey, show, do something about this. Okay, well, you're just a lonely man. Ah, uh, fantastic. There's more that I missed. This is what I get for not being thorough in my search before. Chimera, I know you just died. But couldn't you have at least had the courtesy not to block my path? But when she faces the figure and offers up a prayer... The figure vanishes. Oh, thank goodness. I guess the ghost was glad to see a woman. Looks like my prayer got through to them. Eh, uh, prayers come in handy sometimes, huh? Let's keep going. Yeah, I don't think it was the prayer that helped. A box. I carefully open it up. Inside is a folded scrap of paper and something that looks like incense. Got a suicide note and mosquito repelling incense. Alright, what's the deal with the plant? I pick up the plant and inspect it, but nothing seems out of the ordinary about it. The root is still firmly lodged into the soil. Pulling on it does nothing. Looks like the flower was blooming. The leaves are distinctly pointed. Like the teachings apply honey, manage to swallow it. Wait for me, everyone. I'll be there soon. Okay, well... My demise was because I didn't... Put honey on the thing. Anyway, this looks like it should be something. I take up the broken crowbar and thrust it into the dirt by the plant's base. 
The dirt is softer than I expected. The pointed end easily breaks it up. Finally I get to the root. It kinda looks like a small carrot. Plant root. Huh? What are you going to do with that? Well, I'm telling you what I'm going to do with that, Christy. I'm going to offload you back at the mansion, and then I am going to use this to destroy Shimio. Well, purify it. Sho, I'm counting on you. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to hurt. I slapped my sh <sighs> I slapped Sho's face. Sorry, the dimensions are kind of converging on me here. Ow! Old man, you little... That clear your head a little? He's coming. We have to go. We'll do everything we can, but you have to do as I say. Yeah, okay. I proceed to lead Sho into the darkness. Drifting on the wind from somewhere is the meltingly sweet fragrance of honey. Alright, I should be a lot more prepared this time around. Hello once again, you disgusting lump of all things unholy. Although I will say, for something of your size, you sure are fast. And here's to hoping that this is the last time I have to see that face of yours. Time to wake up and smell the roses. I spray Shimia with the drug and hit him with the baseball bat. A cut opens on his giant body and a bittersweet smelling liquid pours out. Oh, I... I'm not a traitor. Bends over backward moaning, liquid sprays from the holes in his body. Ah, okay. I guess it's like there's cuts already there, and we're just like opening old wounds. Yes, yes, now would be the time to finish him off. Once and for all. A bottle of honey on this thing. I pour honey on the plant root and throw it in Shimio's mouth. He initially tries to expel it, but seems to realize something and gulps it down quickly. He happily stuffs his cheeks with the honey-coated root. No, I can finally see my family. He collapses flat on the ground, the deadly poison having invaded his whole body. His face is frozen into a peaceful smile, like a kid who's just eaten a delicious meal. The bees continue to hover around the still Shimio. I don't sense Shimio anymore. Ha! Serves you right. Shows back to normal, I see. His mark appears to have vanished. Mine is... Of course, still branded red on my arm. And Shimio wasn't the one who gave it to me. But I kinda figured that'd be the case. From what I can tell, when mark bearers confront the spirit that cursed them, they suffer extreme memory loss. That's why Sho was acting strangely. I myself didn't have any problems, so Shimio wasn't the right spirit. Something is lying on the path. It's a small notebook. The cover is wet, the light of the flashlight making it glitter. It could be honey, could be something else. A lot of other disgusting liquids that I'd rather not have to ever come into contact with. Did this belong to Shimio? Where did he hide this? Okay, now I really don't feel like touching it. Let's just assume that he kept it in one of, like, the fat folds. I know that doesn't make it any better, but... 
It's better than having it between, uh, you know. Damn, that's gross. All yours, old man. It seems Sho has absolutely no intention of picking it up. I give up and bend down to grab it. Flipping through the pages, it appears to be a diary. The dark will make it tough to read. Let's take a look when we get back. I want to beat a retreat out of your ASAP. Yeah, you're right. I've had enough of this forest. We carefully retrace our steps back to the entrance so we don't get lost. Just to trek through the forest. Without warning, the light dies. Hey, what are you trying to pull? Don't mess with me like this. It's not me. What's going on? It won't respond. An icy cold shiver runs down my spine. I'm suddenly overwhelmingly afraid, like the dark forest is trying to absorb my body. If I could just get the light back on. If we just had it back, I'd feel so much better. I had to switch repeatedly, silently praying. Just a malfunction? So it was just broken then? Damn, I about had a heart attack. Let's get our asses out of here before it does it again. Oh, you're telling me. We hurry all the way out of here and get into the car. You're finally back. Looks like you were successful, too. The mark's gone. Well, mine is, at least. My mark is still there. What does this mean? Christy is hysterical, clutching her head. What the? No use racking our brains over it. Come on, let's ask Mary. You know what, Sho? You are quite reliable. Welcome back, Lord Yashiki. It appears that you overcame your fear and cleared away the grudge. It is unfortunate that Shimio was not the one who bestowed your mark. Good news is that at least Lord Sho and Lord Mashita's marks vanished. A question. I get why my mark didn't go, but why hasn't Christie's? You know, just put two and two together, right? We, our mark didn't go because it, Shimio didn't give it to us. So it makes sense that Shimio is not the one that gave it to Christy. I thought she got it from Shimio. The hypothesis is then incorrect. What I mean to say is, another spirit must have given her her mark. I don't want to believe it. But it's true that Christy hadn't been in her right mind when we met. It's definitely possible that she hadn't realized she had it already. Lady Christy received her mark fairly recently. Her memory is currently unaffected. But if she were to come into contact with the spirit that cursed her, her amnesia may accelerate. So please, exercise care. Her amnesia would get worse. That would explain Sho's strange behavior before we fought Shimio. Hey, Yashiki. It's been bugging me for a while now, but you kind of stink. I am pretty sweaty. I did spend the whole day walking all over a mountain. What did you expect? No, it's not that. My nose can't compare to a police dong's, but it's still pretty good. Your sleeves smell weird. Maybe it's honey? Made it got on you from the notebook. I never did read that honey-covered notebook, did I? 
I take it out of my bag and open up the sticky pages. Inside it talks about Honeybee family, what they did and their ideologies. I can't tell if Shimio wrote this or someone else, but... The incoherent writing spells out their fanatical thinking and hatred for society. It's fascinating as abnormal psychology, but doesn't bear relevance to our current problem. And the author seems extremely pious. Multiple pages wax on about each shrine. They seriously believed we'd face divine wrath if the shrine fell to ruin. All the suicides in the forest, the numerous horrifying incidents. According to the author, they're all because of the divine wrath of each shrine. Each shrine, divine wrath. Strange, that part sticks out to me. After I finish skimming through, I tell the other mark bearers what it says. Ugh, enough of that crap. Divine wrath, curses, it's too much. Yes, I can't write it off then. It's no more ridiculous than the idea that spirits really exist. We're dealing with the supernatural, so just about anything's fair game. Divine wrath. If that's true, then... It is almost dawn. We must end today's investigation. Please rest. I am sure all of you are tired from walking on the mountain. Oh, you'd better tell me. I haven't been this wiped out since the last time I was at baseball club. Sorry, but I gotta go crash. Later. Too much has happened today. I need a break from it all. I'll think about the future more once I've gotten some rest. Well, good night. Hey, Yashki. I've decided to leave tomorrow, too. Uh, changed your mind? Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, I'm satisfied. The big string of missing persons cases the Force couldn't solve. I figured out what was behind it. And... I've basically closed the Honeybee family case I've chased for years. The truth you're seeking can be found here, huh? Mary's something else, isn't she? I can finally visit someone's grave. His expression's still the same, but it feels like he's more at peace. He accomplished what he set out to do. Hey, Yashki. This whole thing is too dangerous. I'm reckless, but that doesn't mean I don't care if I live or die. Sticking my neck out for you past this point is just too risky. Sorry. My tremor runs through his clenched fist. If you manage to escape your death, I'll buy you a drink sometime. See you. Now, Lord Yashiki. Please inform me once you're ready to rest. Good night. Yeah. Let's take a look at the latter half of this. The spirit vanishes and the honey-covered notebook lies on the ground. A certificate is pasted onto the first page. Registration of the non-profit Honeybee family. With an address within each city. It was signed eight years ago. Their goal is environmental protection of honeybees and their habitats. Their leader's name is Shinzo Maruo. So that's Shimio's true name. The pages are full of incoherent ramblings. Most is about members of the honeybee family and the torments they endured from society. It's as if the family's pent-up resentment spews out with every word. The further I read, the more I notice there's a weird shift in the writing. 
The deeper into the pages I go, the more childish and nonsensical it turns. Found another suicide victim. The divine wrath is accelerating. Spoke with the voice at the shrine again. Divine wrath comes. Must love bees more, or no promised land. That's no good. A traitor among family. Disinherited. Sacrificed. Shrine and me happy. Hate the police. Almost ready to discard the body. Soon. Soon. Last day, everyone went to promised land. So why, 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 why am I the only, 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 only? Oh, body not enough. Holes need more. For whatever reason, Shimio didn't die during the family's mass suicide. I wonder why. Does that mean the voice from the shrine wasn't a hallucination and some kind of divine wrath turned him into a monster? And the traitor policeman from the journal. It must be somehow related to Mashta. No time to check it now. And with that, we close the case on Shimio.